really amazing things with this prehistoric river map. Um, so it must be just because basically of the channels and the landscape that was formed from after the Ice Age following on. And then I think maybe they were just like they had in, in the winter it was really rainy and all these April showers and things and then in the summer it was warm. So maybe in the winter then these water areas grew. And the thing you've got to remember is that now we've got sewer systems all over the country, drainage pipes and land irrigation. And a lot of the farming and farmers have dug channels um, along the fields, particularly Lincolnshire and places like that, that actually take water away. So it, I think it's like a, a lot of modern drainage that has reclaimed a lot of land and irrigation um, that we don't really take into account. Um, I mean, look, so Hull, I think the Hull, one of the Hull MPs has just um, defected to Liberal Democrats, I think, from Labour, which is pretty cool. So Hull was underwater. Hull hasn't got that much um, history for prehistoric England because um, it was underwater. Um, quite a lot of that ghoul area and all around there, Gainsborough. So you could, you could have travelled around by water a lot. So they will have used that. I think this kind of Aboriginal Australian hunter-gatherer thing probably was for a certain period, but I think they will have utilised the waterways. So I don't know why they're saying they can't find that much evidence of early boats. You will have definitely made boats, um, at least inland ones. Maybe they were all woods and they didn't last that long. Those really shallow ones. One thing I want to know on this, this is a really actually interesting thing is you know those caves in Nottingham under Nottingham Castle so the caves are in the centre of Nottingham so the caves weren't quite underwater right the Nottingham caves he all tripped to Jerusalem but they're right next to a massive waterway look at that right on the edge of a waterway so those caves it's not a case of wandering through through the dense vast forests and just coming across these sleeves in the caves they were actually on the junction of a river and actually if you if you watch robin hood prince of thieves um he has him crossing the river kevin costner didn't he when he encounters little john this is our river and if anyone wishes to cross it he must pay a tax they're a massive waterway i think it's a bit more than a river kevin i think it's like um, it looks like um a massive um huge lake you see when you go right down to london um it's all water. I mean, the Thames was extremely wide. You're talking like, you know, it's what what the centre of London is now, at least, anyway, is it was all water there. So that's that. Um, and then you've got all that um, exploding in the wash. So I think it's not to do with sea levels falling or rising. It's just to do with the fact that, um, you know, there was a lot more water transfer, you know, raining a lot more and less irrigation to take away from the land. So it accumulated places. And then obviously these channels might have worn away. So, you know, obviously when the ice age created certain channels and, and, and places, then it would, um, you know, sit in them. Obviously, now we've done a lot of farming now and it's all leveled out, you know, with constant ploughing and things like that and, and, and it just shapes the land. So, another thing that I've noted is this is the Lake District and it's called the Lake District, ironically, because of lakes, right? Now, there doesn't look to be that many significant lakes there, does there? I mean, you've got, well, you've got a lot of lakes, right? There are a lot of lakes, but when you zoom out, you know, there's a few lakes, but there's more water sitting at Alston and around the, the high area of the North Pennines, you know. Um, Al Alst Alston is really, really high up, you know. And then this is the thing, right? If you look here, um, when we go, when we go here, this is our area, West Yorkshire, and we've got the Pennine Ridge. And I said that Castle Hill, the Hillfoot, looks like you've just come over a big ocean waves of the Pennines. Well, it was water! Never mind ocean waves of the Pennines. Look at that! 
They're big, they're bigger lakes. Talk, talk about cop name the lake district. Let's zoom out, right? Whoa, what's going on here? Why did that happen? Why did that happen? Right, so if you look at the top left, the top left is the lake district. Now it has got a lot of scattered lakes, but none of, none of them are anywhere near as deep, even back then in this water period, than, than, than what we've got here. Look at that, they're, they're, they're lakes and a half there, and then like Liverpool was tucked in the water, so I mean, Liverpool's not going to have that ancient piece of history. The rural, somewhere enough, is not And all Manchester itself is water as well. I mean, Manchester ain't got any prehistoric sites because it would completely until into water unless, you know, they were, they, were, they were living on... They might... I don't know. There's not even a mound in the middle of all that. It was just massive um, outreach of water. But also, like, high, obviously higher up. Th these lakes here, you see, are higher up. Th these lakes here at Buxton and um, Chapel and Lefrif, um Glossop, Massively. In fact, there's about as much water there as with Manchester anyway, but up on the tops. So talk about, you know, Lady in the Lake legend and lakes. Um, you've got lakes there, you know, that's significant. And then you can sail all the way to the coast. Hull was underwater. Merce, you see, there's a place, Murfield, right? And that was actually underwater because the river went a lot wider there at Murfield, so it's Murfield, Seafield. You see, when when you take this into consideration and think of ancient names, when you think of quite a large significant area of England around, you know, between Birmingham, Cannock, uh, maybe even Wolverhampton, and then going up towards, you know, Tamworth and Castle Donington, that sort of area, even in, you know, the Arthurian times, um, it, it, I think it was Mercia, so you think of mercy as to surrender, mercy, you know, I give in, I surrender, fly white flag, but mer, mer is the sea, you know, mermen, mermaids, mer the sea, mercy, so, you know, there were quite a lot of water in Birmingham as well, look. Um, you could travel around a lot of these, in particular on the areas where it's more level, and there is, there is water around um, the Siren Sister there, I mean... Cheltenham's got a bit, but you see up on the tops at Cheltenham where the Bellas Nap is water being walks, it's right up on the top. Now the guy who runs this website that we're actually on now, the um prehistoric river map, he's talking about the long barrows symbolizing boats. But I think it, like it, it, it it's more the hill fort a lot of the hill forts were in the middle of water. The long barrows were up at the cairns and long barrows were up at higher places what were dry. Because if you if you actually look at uh, if you go to Brit See the centre of Bristol's not really that much water. It's got it's got those docks now, but um, actually, the, when you go to the mouth of the Avon, all that was underwater, and it didn't start. So you're getting further a little bit inland here to where those high cliffs are, because obviously those cliffs are too high up to be underwater. I love that area; it's very prehistoric. I know they call the Jurassic Coast the Jurassic Coast, but you know it, it, you can't get as more Jurassic feeling than when you're in Bristol on that river. And, and it's funny that the the the, the further bit out, the bit like. I, when I, when I, there's an industrial estate there and you stand on it and it's very very prehistoric <laughs> that was all underwater upset the higher bit it's really magical Bristol actually because it's like a river through, through a mountain you know it, it, it's almost like like um, water flowing through um, a hill it's like water flowing through a hill basically I think Bristol was quite magical to be honest um, not a lot of people know it for prehistoric significance where's bath now see bath is the word for having a bath and getting wet but on this you've got those hot springs in bath but it's not significantly there's a river going through it but it wasn't actually that particular that wide and where's wello there's wello they see there's a long barrow at wello but it's, it's dry there so again stunning littleton long barrow up in those hills there they're not that high hills they're just kind of more like meadowy hills but it, it was dry oh there's a little river there is a stream coming down from it um, and when we go across to, you see, Amesbury, you see you've got Stonehenge is there. You see, Stonehenge was on a dry area. Stonehenge, without a doubt, they found somewhere dry. 
and you've got all these river systems going from it, lots of different ones, Amesbury, Durrington Wells and all that, and then they go down to um, down to Bournemouth, which is significant name, Bournemouth. Got all those river systems, actually more significant going down there than across the Avon, really, to be honest. Um, is West Kennet a bit higher up than there? Is it more Swindon? Hmm... I can't remember, but I, don't, I, can't, I can't see West Kennet being underwater, to be honest. It's around here somewhere. You see where Silbury Hill then? It's, was Silbury Hill surrounded by water? If it was, then I don't think that West Kennet Longbar will be near the water because it's uphill from there. There's Marlborough. I thought it was just high, a bit higher up than Stonehenge. It's quite, it'll be hard to find it on this map because it, what's that? Avebury. You see, Avebury's got a lot of water. I wonder if that was, it must have been filled in around Avebury then. You see, Avebury, that really, really deep trench around it, it must have been filled with water because look, the whole area there is. Got a long water channel coming through it. It must have had something to do with water. And the, these are the minimal... This this is the minimal... This is like when he said the, the water was uh, was towards the lowest. At the minimal extent, it goes further. So Avebury was a place associated, associated with water, I think. Not that far from Stonehenge. Where's... Um, oh, he's... he's I don't know how to find West Kennet on this map. There's another white horse there. You see, it's got some near Uffington, but some people on the groups are saying that um, Uffington camp didn't have water around it, but it had some near it there. And oh, another thing that I want to point out is Worthing. So those hill forts at Worthing, Shankton Brewing and Cis Brewing, um, you see, they're a little bit inland. Well, they, they are. They are. Well, they're near the coasts. So, if they were operating when there was water, they would have been right, right next to the sea. So, Worthing, the town now is right next to the sea. So, the hill forts are a little bit further up than than Worthing. So, if they were going when this was water, then they will. Then those Shankton Brewing and Cis Brewing would have been absolutely definitely um, on the water. Now, Maiden Castle, um, when we get over to um, Dorchester, it's actually got Maiden Castle on here. There it is. You can see it now. Maiden Castle wasn't, didn't have water around it. Although it might, if he's saying this is when it's minimal and then there were some maximal extents, it could have gone up to it maybe. I'm not sure. But... Um, might have gone round it, but according to this, not quite on Reading Castle, but actually water in Dorchester. It, it is quite high up. It's hard, it's hard to imagine any water getting up to it. And it's still quite a little bit away from the coast, actually. Although you could, um, you could actually, it might have been quicker to sail sideways to the coast than go straight down, you know, and get on at this pool place here. All this bridge waters, all water. Now the thing about South Wales is, around the coast here, this all these places around this coastline are very, very high up. You've literally got you know bays and cliff edges. So this is where there are a lot of dolmens and cairns. So this didn't. This was definitely all these dolmens and cairns where are on the high, the high cliffs and ridges. All around wheels, and Anglesey didn't really have that much extra water on it, so you know they they, they keep dry. Um, and if you go up to Aberdeen, you've got a lot of those crannogs and lakes and stuff. That's where that Painter's Cave is on this coast, and all these recumbent circles. 
Um, it is there's a lot of dry area there, and then um, all this prehistoric stuff that we find at Orkney. Um, you know, th those islands are pretty where we find all those birds. But at least this top bit here near John Groats, all that was water, so there will have been a lot of sailing around to get out to those islands. I think that's probably why they're pre preserved, because look at this. I mean, to get out there, it, it, it was all water. And then you've got islands, so it's it's kind of island and, sail and sailing living. And when you're knocking around, you know, when that's all islands itself and you're sailing around the back, then you're just knocking around the coastline, aren't you? You know? He's just pottering around coastlines. Um, and when you're pottering around coastlines up there, and you, you're pottering around in and out up here. That, you see this North Alton here, this is where they sent the Romans and reckoned it was the headquarters of um, the Brigantes all up this area, but it's all, it's all water there. I don't know how much water there was at the time of the Roman conquest. But um, you see, we, we see, you see, the potting around around those islands, uh, um, you know, up at Orkney. Then you're potting around from you know Uddersfield on this river system here to Wool, aren't you? And, and more than potting around, in fact, um, and all around, you know, before you even get out to Hull, then you got all this massive, huge, um, Scunthorpe, Thorn, Gainsborough, all the way down to those Nottingham caves. Literally, I mean. This is quite flat out here when you, when you get out to Nottinghamshire and Lincolnshire. So you could probably, likely, look at this. You could hop on there at the Nottingham Caves, and then you know this ain't uphill. I can tell you that now. You know, so you've got all this water connected together at Gainsborough, and then when you get up here, you know, then you can go out towards Hull and the Sea, or you can come in this way. You could actually. Sail to those caves at Nottingham as easily as you could go to Hull. Because this out here is as flat as a pancake. Don't tell me in, because I've been there every week for 20 years. So, you know, don't tell me what it's like out there. I'll tell you what it's like out there. Um, But these high lakes, look at how, how much water's there. Well, there's actually vast big lakes and then you've got the big lake the, the high lake and the low lake down at Manchester in the lowland and then um, it'll go in, it's hardly a lake district I mean it's hardly it's a bit of a joke calling it the lake district you know a little lake district or a big you know <laughs> it's, it's kind of comedy although you've got some big lakes here I mean look it would have been more lakes Alston you know um, there's more lakes Alston well Alston is in Cumbria actually no wonder it's called the Lake District. Probably more, more so called it for, for what was there than, than it was round by Keswick. You know, they're dinky lakes. And to be honest, um, look at this. I mean, I know they've got locks now. You've got all these long locks now, Loch Ness Monster, but those locks are all that's left. Those locks now, the long, thin locks, which they call them locks, they, they're, 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 you know, they're, 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 they're petty remains of, of vast, huge... Inland lakes, um, so it, it's quite amusing, really. Um, so you know, I find it very, very interesting. You know, probably the most interesting thing that I've ever read about prehistoric England. Um, it's, it's as interesting, if not more interesting, than, than the stones. I mean, studying the stone circles and then studying chambers and cairns. I mean, now you're stu studying the lake systems and waterways. Um, and now this, and they were saying that there were people. There might have even been people before the ice age. Now and then they got pushed off because because it because of the ice age and they came back again. So um, there's there's a group called Doggerland on there and um, it's really good actually. And there's all this Macclesfield and Con Mac Macclesfield and Congleton. There's a lot, lot of water around there as well. I'm quite interested in Oswestry. Probably more connected by water. Than anything else, see Oswest Drill Fort is right in this this lake. Although part of it's uphill, I can't imagine it. I'm not too sure how he's got it like this and what it was at the full extent. Because when you're actually looking at the hill fort, there's some bits that go uphill, and I can't imagine that being all submerged. Or the hill fort itself would have been submerged, but I'm not quite sure how he how he figures it out. Um, but it, 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 I can imagine having somewhat amount of water around it. So, you know, 
interest very very interesting